I'm Richard Taylor. The elections for Cambridge's Police and Crime Commissioner are underway and I've published my views on what I think a commissioner should do. The commissioner needs to set the strategic direction not only for the police but also for the courts, the probation service, the prison service and also for those parts of other bodies such as local councils, schools and the health service where they have an impact on policing and crime matters. Now, if a commissioner is going to have a significant long-term impact on crime levels then I think they need to take this kind of all-encompassing broad view approach. I take education. Now it's really important that all of our young people are given the skills and aspirations they need to choose a life away from crime. It's also important that our young people are educated so that they can make informed decisions about things like taking illegal drugs or not or getting involved in dangerous, careless, reckless behaviour um, on our roads. They need to know what our laws are, what our society expects and what the potential implications are of their decisions um, both on themselves, on their health and on wider society. In terms of the health service, the reason the Commissioner needs to take an interest there is, or well, one of the reasons, is the level of crime committed by those with addiction or other mental health problems. The Commissioner would need to um, really ensure that um, sentencing is focused on both punishing people and where those um, health problems are underlying their criminality that it, the sentencing is designed to get their health and lives back on track. It's also really important that um, committing a crime and going through the court system is not the easiest way for people to get the, um, the help they need to address their, their health problems. Now one of the things that really worries me about the introduction of the Police and Crime Commissioner is the concentration of power and responsibility in one person who inevitably in the Cambridgeshire area um, will not have detailed knowledge of um, locally of say Cambridgeshire and Peterborough or indeed all, all the other areas covered. Um, nobody has um, detailed knowledge of, of the entire area. So what I would like to see is local elected councillors uh, empowered to set local policing priorities and hold the police to account at a local level in much the way that happens in Cambridge at the moment but doesn't help um, elsewhere across the force area. At a slightly higher level, at the level of a district, I would like to see just a relationship akin to that between the Commissioner and the Chief Constable, between the Cabinet Member or Executive Member for Policing and the local district police commander. Now, I think these elections give us a real opportunity to impact um, what policing looks like um, in a real local way and in a way that we'll see on a day-to-day -day basis. I think one of the big things there is PCSOs. Now the government central funding for PCSOs is currently ring-fenced until April of next year. It will be up to a police commissioner um, whether or not uh, money is spent on um, PCSOs or police constables. Now I think that police constables are um, much better value for money than um, PCSOs. The constables can cost approximately the same amount and yet they have um, a full range of powers whereas PCSOs are unable to deal um, with many things that um, people want them to, to, um, to deal with, for example the speeding. So I would like to see those PCSOs who are able and capable and want to um, become police constables and where decisions have to be made on where best to um, put police funding. I, I think it makes much more sense to put the money towards police constables than it does to um, towards PCSOs. Uh, I think there's also a potential to influence the tone of policing that we have in this country. Um, for example, I'm a campaigner against the routine arming of um, police with taser and the reason that, um, that I oppose the police arming themselves with taser on a routine basis is that I'm concerned about the impact on police public relations if they do that. We have a very thin blue line in this country and it's essential that we maintain policing by consent rather than policing by force. And so our police must remain um, approachable, that they must remain um, not separate from the um, rest of the community w which they are police. I think it's really important that a um, police and crime commissioner um, doesn't set too much store on uh, statistics such as the rates of recorded crime. 
The reason for that is simply that um, the rates of recorded crime could well go up if people start having more confidence in the police, more confidence that um, appropriate action will be taken if they report crime to them. I think the kind of statistics that I would like to see a police and crime commissioner focus on um, include the costs of crime, which currently I don't think are um, recorded and analysed in enough detail or as well in Cambridgeshire as happens elsewhere in the country and also the um, number and severity of injuries caused um, relating to um, both crime and um, incidents on our roads. Uh, if a commissioner is able to have a significant impact on injury statistics then they will really know that they've had a significant impact on people's lives. It would also be really important for um, a commissioner to take an interest in the national policing picture, particularly as um, the national policing um, arrangements are changing a lot as commissioners are being brought in, uh, particularly through the creation and introduction of the uh, National Crime Agency. So it would be very important that a commissioner isn't overly locally focused but also takes a national role and ensures that um, what the national bodies are doing supports uh, what they, they want to be doing locally and supports what local people are um, demanding of the police. It's also important that the Commission doesn't get distracted too much by um, what people are calling for in local meetings and what is electorally popular and they need to keep um, mindful of things like preparedness for um, emergency situations um, such as floods and um, on things like um, serious and organised crime which might not be mentioned um, a lot when um, commissioners uh, ask the public what it is that um, they would like them to focus on. Now police privatisation is probably going to be a key discussion during the elections. Um, it's already something that um, some of the candidates have um, set out their positions on and I, I think that this isn't a binary issue, it's not a case of privatisation or not. We've already got in Cambridgeshire Police elements um, that are privatised, for example the forensic services and the provision of custody medics. And just as in the domestic situation, sometimes going out to um, a private company or even another police force for a service, um, it really does make sense. Uh, for example, I own a car, but I don't own a van because I don't have a, a use for one very often, so if I need one, I, uh, I would rent one. And, and the same thing uh, applies to, um, to, to elements of policing too. However, there is a really important question about what, is, um, what are the elements of policing which you can never privatise. And I think th th those are relatively clear. It's the exercise of police powers. I wouldn't want to see, uh, or don't want to see, and I don't like where it happens at the moment, police powers are given to individuals who are not employed um, by the public sector. And I also think it's really important that, that the basic elements of policing, um, police patrols are not privatised. Um, clearly it should only be police officers and, and not private um, the employed people who are able to arrest and detain people. Um, I myself have um, been in Oakington Detention Centre which was run by a, a private company and I felt that was very wrong there where I saw people being um, incarcerated by the state and those they were being um, held by um, were not employees of the state but employees of the um, private company. There was only one representative um, of the state um, on site there and there was quite a list of um, a lot of people it took a long time in order to get an appointment just to see that person to actually for those being detained to um, discuss their detention with the person who was actually um, representing the, the, the state which was, was authorising it. Now I've um, taken interest in this election, I've published my, my views and I've said that I would um, stand if I was nominated. Uh, hasn't happened but it's been really interesting and encouraging to see that um, quite a, a, a number of people um, did, did sign up and a, a good fraction of those actually offered to put money up for a deposit as well. Now I will be continuing to um, look at what the candidates come up with um, in the election, continue to comment on, on, on what happens, not least to try and decide um, which way or if at all I'm going to, to vote myself. I would also hope to um, try and observe and monitor what the Commissioner does when they come into office. Now, another one of my concerns is that that actually might be really quite difficult. Um, to date I've been able to keep um, an eye on the police authority and I've been able to find out 
um, about um, police performance in public and I don't know whether that, that will continue and one of my concerns is that um, now the police authority has um, wound down, will there be that kind of um, possibility for public oversight and, and for people like me to look at um, how the police policy and police strategy is being set and also to um, simply look at things like um, police statistics, police call handling performance, police stop and search statistics and that kind of thing. I, I'm concerned that we might actually see a, um, an increase in democracy once every five years but a decrease in the sort of routine openness and transparency of, um, the, the, of the way the police force works in, in Cambridgeshire.